you were going to make life so miserable <laughs> that, that they were going to want to win more than they were going to be okay with losing. Troy, I know that you were part of so many great Thanksgiving Day games, uh, but really the only one I remember is the last game that I ever lost for the Dallas Cowboys. I, yeah. I, don't, remember, <laughs> I don't remember any of the other ones. I yeah. remember the last game that I ever lost with the Cowboys. Yeah, I remember a few others probably more than you do. But, I, I, you know, I was asked about Thanksgiving Day games just the other day, and I said the one that stands out was the last one that Jimmy coached us in, and it was against the – Miami Dolphins, and what stood out about that game, Jimmy, I know it was crazy. First of all, it was the only game that, that I played in the snow, and there it was in Dallas, you know, of all places. Right. But what I remember is the very next day, I got on a plane. I was going out of town because we were off that weekend. Leon let and it had the mishap, and, and we lost the game and all that. And I thought, as did most of the guys on our team, that Leon Lett was going to get released, right? Because I know how much that game meant to you, and I'll never forget it. I got on the airplane to fly out the next morning, and the headlines in the Dallas Morning News said, Jimmy Johnson says Leon Lett won't be cut, or something to that effect. Right. And Leon was just a backup role player, and I said, Jimmy thinks there's something really special about this guy because he would be gone <laughs> otherwise. And, of course, Leon went on to be an all-pro defensive tackle, had a great career. But that that's what, of all the things that happened about Thanksgiving games, that's the thing that stands out most for me. Well, see, I blame the snow for that loss. Yeah. I mean, you I blame mean, something. Well, well, <laughs> well, him, but really, I mean, and see, it wasn't Leon Lett's fault. I mean – you know, Avizano, you know, bless his soul, you know, he's not with us anymore. But Joe, our special teams coach, he came up, you know, here it snowed. It never snows in Dallas, you know, on Thanksgiving. You know, it was just a, such a rare event. And Joe says, you know, with that snow, we might have a chance to block a field goal or something. What do you think about taking a, one of our big guys and putting him right there, you know, as blocking the field goal? Yeah, I said, ah, great idea, great idea. He said, how about Leon Lett? You know, Leon's not involved with any of the special teams, uh, but, you know, he's a big guy. He's athletic. He can tall. He can get him, maybe block a field goal. I said, great idea, great idea. <laughs> you know, and so poor Leon, who, who hasn't been in the special teams meetings, you know, didn't know the rules, you know, he goes out there, and now we block the field goal. And, you know, it would have won the game because we were ahead. And Leon touches the ball. Well, everybody blames Leon. Right. You know, but, you know, hey, I'll take the knife. I, you know, I'll, I'll lay on the sword. It was my fault. We shouldn't have put Leon on that uh, unit. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that's, that Leon was normally not even on that group. Well, if he was if he was in that group, in some of those meetings, he wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he, wasn't, he wasn't involved with any of the units. Yeah. And, I'll tell you, so, what's... Uh, What's interesting, Jimmy, is, you know, as you know, we always felt like we had an advantage on Thursdays, those, those Thanksgiving games. We always got to play them at home. It was a quick turnaround. We knew how to do it because we did it every year. And all these other teams, they all wanted to then play on Thanksgiving because they saw the advantages that we got with it essentially being a late season bye week. And now every team does get that Thursday you know, yeah. game, and, and and I don't know that it's been as well received as what a lot of people thought that it might be <laughs> right. when they started handing out Thursday games. It's hard to, you know, get ready in a short amount of time, especially if you have to travel. But the reason I remember that game, not only was it the last game that I ever lost and we went ahead and won the Super Bowl, the Dolphins never won another game that year. They, yeah. they lost every game after that. We won every game after that. So, hey, maybe it was a good thing for us. Well, I will tell you that for me, uh, my my favorite game was the NFC Championship game in 92 when we beat the San Francisco 49ers to go to the Super Bowl because, you know, we were a young, talented football team, but we just didn't really quite know how good, uh, in all honesty. We were underdogs going into that game against a really veteran team that had won a lot of games, and, and that was uh, – 
once once we won that game and then we obviously went on and won the Super Bowl, it it, it made it clear in all of our minds just how good we were. And uh, it was a fun period. I mean, that uh, but that was the game that that I think solidified us, solidified where we stood and, and what ultimately ultimately we went on to become and accomplish. Yeah, yeah Troy, I, I think that was one of the great ones for me, too, because I actually, even to this day, I felt like the 49ers were a better team than us. But they weren't a better team that day. That's but right. overall, that year, they were really a heck of a football team. And we happened to beat them that day. And then after that, I guess the best memory I ever had in Dallas was two weeks later, uh, the Sunday morning of the Super Bowl, when I walked out on that field, you know, I was so confident that we were going to beat, you know, the Buffalo Bills because they turned the ball over too much. I told the team that the night before. And, you know, I was walking on that field and, you know, it was just such a great feeling knowing that we were going to be Super Bowl champions. And it was before the game ever started. Uh, it was a great feeling. You know, I, Jimmy, those uh, nights before games, I, I wouldn't sleep great. You know, I'd almost play the game in my mind before, you know, I'd wake up and, and, I, and, and I would have thought that the, we'd either won the game already or we had lost the game, depending on whatever, you know, happened while I was sleeping that night. But that, that year, that game of the Super Bowl, the night before, I woke up, I'd never slept better before a game. I'd never been more relaxed going into a game forget that it was the Super Bowl, more relaxed than I'd ever been even going into a, a preseason game. You know, that's how calm right. I was. And I was a little concerned about it, quite honestly. I thought, wow, I mean, why am I so relaxed? But, you know, that old thing where they say <clears throat> that when you win a Super Bowl or you go to a Super Bowl, you have this Super Bowl hangover. I, I never understood that because, man, <laughs> once you get a taste of what that atmosphere is like and, and yeah. winning – how could you not want to go do that every single year? I mean, I just have never quite understood that thinking. Yeah, it uh, it was, you know, as far as getting a good night's rest, I, you know, I actually, I, I was probably more nervous playing teams that we were 14-point favorites than I was, you know, we were an underdog for that Buffalo team because, please, they had all those, you know, veteran players. They've been to a couple of Super Bowls already, and we had the youngest team in the league. But uh, there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to win that ball game. And obviously it was a, uh, a pretty easy win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know that if any time I, I felt that, that we were a dynasty or were going to be a dynasty, but what, what I always appreciated about those teams while Jimmy was our head coach was one, how talented we were. And, and, and Jimmy's to be credited for that. And as great as a coach, as great of a coach as Jimmy uh, was and is, he, he might have been better at, at assembling our roster and really having an eye for, for getting uh, great value in, in lower rounds. And you could go through a, a list of players that, you know, far exceeded where, where they were drafted and what they meant to our, our, our teams. And and also the way in which we worked. I mean, we worked hard. Uh, we worked hard from the from the day Jimmy and I arrived, and uh, we did things that a lot of other teams around the league were not doing. And our best players were were our hardest working players. And so I, I think when you when you talk about those teams and why we were good, uh, it was because we were really talented, but but we also worked exceptionally hard, and our best players were our hardest working players. Yeah, the other thing, Troy, and I, this can be a mutual admiration society, but, you know, I, our players, you know, they weren't selfish. Uh, it, it was really a team. People ask, you say, okay, who were the great leaders on your team? And I said, God, we had so many. I mean, it wasn't like one guy. I mean, you know, you, you know, Michael, uh, you know, you know, even Gogan. I mean, I, I would throw all of them, you know, Russell, Maryland, you know, yeah. on and on, all of the players that we had, you know, I can name 20 players that were great leaders. And I remember, Troy, uh, our second year, you know, here we had the 115 the first year, and then the second year, looks like we were going to go to the playoffs and you hurt your shoulder. 
And uh, it, had you not hurt your shoulder, we would have gone to the playoffs that second year. And they had the Pro Bowl voting. I remember we walked down the field, we sat on that little brick wall right before practice started. And I felt bad. I, I said, you know, Troy, I tried to get you in the Pro Bowl. You know, I'm sorry that you didn't make the Pro Bowl. And you looked over at me and said, Coach, you know, don't, don't worry about Pro Bowls. You know, you just keep bringing in talented players and I'll go to plenty of Pro Bowls. I mean, but that's how you were, but that's how our team was. That's how our it, team was. It was, yeah, it was great group. And we had, we've had, uh, of course, you went on and coached with the Dolphins and, and a number of our guys, North Turner, of course, went on and coached with a number of organizations. And you go through the whole list of, of coaches who went elsewhere. But all of those coaches over the years have told me that what we had in Dallas was so unique that it, they never experienced that anywhere else that they went. It, it, it was you know, you hate to say perfect storm, but it was just the right place at the right time for so many people uh, to achieve what we were able to achieve that maybe none of us, you know, there's always all this talk about you and Jerry, but maybe none of us truly appreciated just what we had at that moment in time because it was so early for us. It came together so quickly yeah. uh, for us, even though those first couple of years were tough. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, Great relationships, great memories, uh, a lot of wins. Um, it was a great time in, in my life, and I know I can say that for a lot of other teammates of mine. Yeah, yeah. the other thing is our guys never accepted losing. You know, uh, I remember, I don't know, it was like maybe the fourth or fifth year. We'd already, you know, cinched the playoffs, and uh, we played Washington. And I'm sure you remember it. You know, and, and like I said, we're in the playoffs, and I don't know, it, it, so-called meaningless game. And and we lost the ball game. And we get on that plane, and, you know, they were kind of hooping and hollering. And, one thing, and the gal starts to serve the food. I said, no, no, uh, you're not serving any food. <laughs> they don't deserve to eat. They didn't play. And so they didn't, they didn't serve any food on the plane. And... I walked back, you know, back there like I always did after every ball game. And uh, obviously I had a, a few choice words for some guys. But Wanstead asked me the next morning, he said, Coach, he says, weren't you a little hard on them? You know, didn't even serve them food or did? I said, you know, I said, Dave, I don't care if they hate me. I said, but, you know, when we lose, I want them to be sick to their stomach. I don't want them to accept that. You know, I, I I want them to just be nauseated when, when we lose. And when we win, hey, they, they can do whatever they, yeah. they want to do, but you know, not when we lose. And, and our guys continually had that feeling. You know, Terry Bradshaw asked me, he said, you know, you were such an SOB, you know, when you were coaching the Cowboys in the second year, how were you there for the second Super Bowl? I said, I was a bigger SOB. <laughs> and he said, well, he said, with all those veterans, if you stay that third year, would you have lightened up a little on them? I said, no, I would have been a big rest <laughs> me that third year because you got to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And yeah, but that, I, our guys were driven. They were driven. And I think that there are there, there, there are always those self-starters and then there's those that aren't. And it doesn't matter what level that you're talking about. And I think that, that you know, one of the things you were great at was that it, for those players that it maybe wasn't as, it didn't hurt them as much when we didn't win, you were going to make life so miserable that, <laughs> that they were going to want to win more than they were going to be okay with losing, you know? And, and people ask me all the time, how was Jimmy? And I said, listen, you know, when, when we won and it didn't matter like how, how little we may have won by, or even if we didn't play quite as well, there was nobody that made it more fun on Monday after a win than Jimmy. I said, we celebrated wins. But let me tell you something. When we lost, <laughs> you didn't want to have to walk into that building on Mondays. Jimmy made it a living hell, you know. And but that was uh, that was that was what made it work, you know. And our guys responded to all that. So that was it carried us, Jimmy, as you know. I mean, even when you left for a number of years, the the footprint that you left on us and that organization it carried us uh, for a number of years and. And then eventually, you know, it uh, you know it just eroded. But uh, yeah, that was it was special. It's hard to believe that it was just five years. You know, I, that it, was, it was a quick time in our lives, but it was certainly memorable. 
Yeah, it, I think Troy, we were able to get away with that because we had such a young team. Yeah. Had we had a lot of veterans or maybe free agents from other teams, you know, they might have been a little bit resistant, saying, "Wait a minute now, hey, well, you don't need to be such a, you know, hard ass." You know, I mean, we had such a young team; they accepted it, and yeah. they said, "Hey, this is the way you do pro football." Yeah, and uh, it, like you say, it was a special, special time. Uh, great, great memories, and and it's amazing to me that it was a long time ago because it seems like it was yesterday. It sure does. You know, I think their defense has been – they've been getting better. Uh, if they won't be put in bad field position with turnovers, I think they can hold it together. Um, and then offensively, they've got to somehow protect the quarterback and keep him from getting hit and give him enough time to get the ball to those talented receivers. Now, Ezekiel Elliott can help out a lot by running the football. That will slow down that pass rush and give him some time to get the ball to the you know, talented receivers. Yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a challenging year, as we know, and and this Cowboys team came in with high expectations, and I, rightfully so. Um, not having the off season with Mike McCarthy obviously was a factor. They've had a number of injuries, losing Dak Prescott. They were rolling along pretty well on offense before Dak got injured. They were turning the ball over. That's that's really like Jimmy said. That's they 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 have to clean that up to give themselves a chance. I mean, they they face a Washington team that's been pretty good, pretty solid on the defensive side of the ball, and and now with Alex Smith uh, on offense, they they they're showing that they can start to move the football a little better than they had, you know, without him. And what a great story he is. You know, I mean, as as much as I love the Cowboys, uh, I'm sure. It's sure nice to see Alex Smith in uniform and playing, and and I, I'd love to see him play well. But uh, yeah, that's that's the whole key. This this team's kind of shorthanded right now with uh, a lot of the injuries that they've had, and then losing their quarterback. So they've got to they just can't beat themselves. And if they don't do that, then they at least give themselves a chance. But too often they've they've turned the ball over and they just haven't even been competitive. Well, I would tell you that I'm, I'm grateful for my health uh, and I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my daughters. Uh, you know, these are, uh, these are difficult times on, on everyone and, and everyone has their, their story as to how it's been for them and how this has impacted them and the sacrifices that have had to be made. And, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it brings us all a little bit closer to the people who matter most, even though we don't get a chance unfortunately, to be with them as often as what we would like outside of our immediate family. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for all the friends in my life, for my experiences, for my health, for my children. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, I, I echo that, Troy. Uh, number one, uh, you know, people that know me know that, you know, in my early years, I probably wasn't as close to my family as what I should have been. Uh, but I'm thankful for my family, my, you know, my wife, Rhonda, my, my sons, my daughter-in-laws, my granddaughters. I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for them because we're closer now than we have ever, ever been. And I'm so extremely proud of them. Uh, the thing that I do miss, though, is I miss my friends. Um, you know, my Fox family, uh, I, I miss being with them. The football tradition on Fox continues. We get set on Thanksgiving. Alex Smith in Washington to take on Zeke and the Cowboys. Touchdown! We celebrate this special day with the game we all love. Thanksgiving Day on Fox.